Hello and welcome to News Click. Just months since the Fukushima nuclear disaster, an event that is still playing itself out, a rethink on nuclear programs has happened across the world. Some countries have retrenched their nuclear program and some have even halted the plans for nuclear energy. Only a few months ago, we had protests in Jaitapur in Maharashtra against a nuclear plant that was supposed to be imported from France and that has been followed by protests against a long pending and soon to be commissioned VVER plant imported from Russia in Kudankulam in South Tamil Nadu. We have with us here T. Raghunandan, President of the All India People Science Network. Raghu, uh, welcome to News Click. Tell us something about this VVER, rea VVER reactors imported from Russia. The uh, Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited says that uh, these reactors are quite safe. In fact, they have uh, uh, force the uh, Russians to actually modify to re modify the reactors uh, so as to you know, uh, keep up with safety standards following the Fukushima incident. Uh, how, how credible are these claims, do you think? See, the VVER reactor is a uh, much later design reactor than the Fukushima uh, one. So it would stands to reason that it would be safer than earlier yeah. uh, uh, models yeah. or earlier reactors. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that is the issue uh, so much in terms of the safety aspects uh, themselves because uh, what I think Fukushima, before that Chernobyl, before that Three Mile Island have all shown is that each time a nuclear accident takes place, it has been due to new factors. So the issue is not that yesterday Chernobyl happened so you do something so that a Chernobyl type accident does not repeat right. or Fukushima happened and then you do right. something that in case a tsunami comes then what happens. I think these are different right. circumstances, right. different uh, contexts in which the nuclear plant uh, exists right. and to say that the VVER reactor is safer than the one at Fukushima right. is true but it is, doesn't say much. Right. But at the same time, uh, the, the location of the reactor is Kudankulam is close to an area where uh, which was, it was affected by a tsunami not long ago. So, uh, do you think the, uh, the authorities have done enough to allay the fears? Uh? See, that is the uh, $64 million question right now. Uh, there are fears. Whether the authorities have done enough in terms of design, in terms of safety precautions, one is not sure right. and that's precisely the worry. Right. Um, the fact that people are scared right. is a reality. Right. People are scared after Fukushima right. uh, because supposedly this was taking place, Fukushima that is, uh, in a society and a context where a lot of safety measures had been taken, right. yet the disaster took place. Now, this site, Kalpakkam, had also been visited by the uh, tsunami uh, last time. Although by the time the tsunami had reached Indian shores, the effect was not uh, that much. And some precautions have been taken here. You don't have a force feed uh, cooling uh, system. You have a gravity fed uh, cooling system. But we don't know what is the capacity of the gravi gravity fed cooling system, how many hours or days uh, will it be able to cool the reactor because what we saw happen in Fukushima right. is that the coolant circulatory system had collapsed because there was no power but even if there had been power what was the water they would have had access to right. Right. that also we don't know right. and the same question might arise right. here right. the real issue I think to me is the fact that the question you asked have the authorities done enough right. to allay fears I think the answer is very clearly no. And that, that has risen, I mean that has given rise to a heightened sense of insecurity in terms of fishermen pro protesting that uh, uh, you know having a nuclear reactor close by would result in you know uh, their catchment area getting destroyed and fishing not being made possible and so on and so forth. So, uh, so are, there, are there valid concerns in some sense? Uh? See I am not too sure about those honestly because uh, even in Jaitapur in Tarapur and so on, I am not sure the real concerns were these. The extent to which uh, localized heating of the water takes place 
would affect some uh, fishing in a small area, perhaps a kilometer on either side. By the time you get further than a kilometer, I think dilution by the sea water would have taken account of uh, the rising temperatures. Uh, in that sense, a nuclear power plant located on the coast is no more or less disruptive than a port, which is perhaps a port may even uh, have a larger impact in terms of displacing fishermen, uh, displacing normal activities. So to that extent, any industrial plant located on the sea is bound to have some impact on local economic, traditional economic uh, activities. But I don't think that is the major uh, concern here. The major concern here still pertains to safety. And there we have had in the last month or so assurances from uh, the NTPC, assurances from the Atomic Energy Regulatory Board and now assurances from the Prime Minister himself that everything is alright, everything is safe. I am afraid this no longer convinces anybody. This uh, no longer convinces anybody because the functioning of the nuclear energy sector is so non-transparent, right? F for both, for two reasons. If you look at uh, Fukushima and Japan, Japan is a society where people have traditionally respected those in authority. Whether it is the government, whether it is technocrats, it comes as a big shock to them if there is a failure of governance, failure in other ways, malfeasance of uh, any sort. Even after Fukushima, people took the authorities at their word, going along with the precautions that were taken, displacement and so on. It was only after a month or so that even the traditionally quiescent and extremely tolerant Japanese people finally realized that the wool was being pulled over their eyes that people were not being forthcoming about the reality, about how much damage was being caused, how much damage was caused to dairy products, to vegetables, to habitation, to the sand lots in which children were playing outside uh, schools. And today, I believe the biggest impact in Japan, apart from the radioactivity, has been the shattering of confidence in authority uh, as a result of Fukushima. In India, Neither are people so traditionally tolerant of authority, nor have authority commanded such respect. Both due to the sociological conditions in this country, as well as the behavior of people in authority. And people of late in the last year, two years, have developed a very deep suspicion of those in authority. Whether it is in the various scams that have uh, taken place, uh, whether it is in addressing poverty issues, why should the public take the Prime Minister's assurance on Kudankulam seriously when a similar assurance that everything is alright with the 2G scam, rules were followed, was shown not to be true. When those in authority today say, if uh, you earn more than 35 rupees a day, you are alright, you are not poor, so people have today a very deep suspicion. And in the nuclear field, we have just seen the government having come out with a draft bill for the Nuclear Regulatory Authority, which far from giving the autonomy and independence to the Nuclear Regulatory Authority, which should have been done and which activists have been demanding for such a long time, has actually gone in the reverse direction and has created a nuclear regulatory authority which is answerable to the government in every single way. So under circumstances like this, an assurance by the Prime Minister that everything is safe, I am afraid will not cut any ice. Having said that, so the lack of the credibility gap, gap that is present in governance now, that has resulted in a situation where there is deep skepticism about uh, not just the way the government has functioned but about nuclear energy itself. Now, there are demands of a you know, moratorium on any new projects that have to be happen unless safety reviews are done of the existing plants itself and so on. So, so and there is also a deep, uh, you know, <coughs> antithetical attitude towards nuclear energy per se. Do you share that attitude? See, I think there are two aspects in this. One is there are those who have decided a long time ago, before Fukushima, before Chernobyl, 
that uh, nuclear energy is unsafe and should not be uh, allowed to happen in this uh, country. Chernobyl and Fukushima reinforced their uh, views and their convictions. After Chernobyl and Fukushima, there are many people who were, shall we say, on the fence, who are undecided about an in principle objection to nuclear energy, who now seem to have come to the opinion that, look, if things can go so wrong, then maybe it is better to err on the side of caution than to err on the side of bravado. My own feeling is that the last word has not been said on the subject of nuclear energy. In particular, for example, India is soon going to commission its fast breeder reactor. This will be a milestone in nuclear energy uh, production and research. It's ultimately a research reactor being taken up to commercial uh, scale. Now, would one take a stand against that? Uh, I would still go back to what I believe is the formulation appropriate for the current context, which is you need a thorough safety audit of all nuclear plants. You need complete separation of the nuclear energy establishment from government and the powers that be. You need the veil of secrecy lifted from nuclear uh, energy and you need a credible and completely independent nuclear regulatory authority. Today the country is clamoring for an effective Lokpal bill because there is a belief that corruption will not be checked by people from inside the system. Similarly, there is no reason to believe that any wrongdoings or malpractices within the nuclear establishment are going to be corrected from within the system. So you must create credible independent bodies outside the system. The government today says it has conducted a safety audit after Fukushima. Nobody knows what the safety audit is. The safety audit should be made public. There are people today who are retired nuclear engineers and scientists who are amongst us, who can review those, who are independent experts. Then there is a possibility of confidence being restored. Without these measures, I believe it will not be possible even for those who have strong convictions that nuclear energy can be made safe to convince people that this is so. So you, you are arguing for accountability in the system. And that being a prerequisite for sustaining this program, right. of having a... Unless you have a truly credible and accountable system, which takes the public into confidence, which includes public participation as a major element in planning for and siting of and operation of nuclear reactors, and in conducting periodic safety uh, reviews, uh, I think this problem will not be solved. And in fact, the history of nuclear accidents show that those countries which have maintained the maximum secrecy and the least transparency in running of nuclear power plants are those which have had the most problems.